Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? I'm in a much better mood, Pablo. Our show, we got the real show. And we got a fun trailer for something else, which I know we were both excited about. So it's been a good week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't you feel somewhat like it, something was right in the world after watching WandaVision 4? It was, yeah, it, it was an amazing yes. feeling. It was an yeah. amazing it was a great. It was it, it was a great episode. I thought it was the first. It was the first Marvel, ep, first Marvel episode. Let's call it that way. It yeah. felt like a Marvel show again. Yeah, and that was a good thing. But it did tie back to some of what we had seen. I'm still a little. It made me a little more critical of the decision to make this nine episodes. I did want to say that because I it when I saw this episode, I kind of was like, we could have made the first three episodes one episode. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 I think it did take a little too long to get to where we were, but it felt good to get there for sure. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I think let's say they made um, two episodes of that. Let's say they made the first four episodes two episodes. The first episode would have been hard to get through. Um. And then starting the next episode, it would have been even harder, but then we would have finally got that payoff. But I I was thinking about WandaVision episode four and when it was done and, I, and for the show, I was thinking about an analogy. I'm a big boxing fan. I love boxing. Even before I started doing this show, I wanted to do a boxing show. That's how much I love boxing. We could, we could do that anytime you want. Oh yeah, you we a can boxing fan like that? We want. we want to talk about '80s middleweights. We can do that all day. That's yeah. We'll, coming soon to you. <laughs> um, and and it felt like, you know, you get the announcement of these two great fighters who have great talents who have been who are who are fantastic fighting each other. Finally, right? The the date has arrived. They're finally in the ring. And then you get those first few rounds of feelers, right? I, it, sure. and, and you know, the, the, you're excited that they're there, but you start you sort of start getting a little bit uh, impatient with the lack of activity and the lack of excitement that you're feeling because of what your expectations were, because of what you've seen from them in the past. To finally get that round where. All right, now people are throwing punches and taking a little bit more risks, and 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 and, and now was an exciting fight, and it turned out to be fantastic, and that's how I felt watching this episode. I could, when it when it ended, I was like, "Damn, that's it." <laughs> oh, totally agree, but I want to go back to the point of from an editing perspective. I do still, I wish this episode had been part of what was released the first day that this show was posted. And so whether it was editing this down to two episodes or what have you, I think it would have helped us in how we would have processed the first three episodes if we had this one to watch, binge watch right away. I think you you, know, you and I last week were kind of like, where, where are we going? Like we better be moving soon, you know? And, and the answer was we were, but in some ways, like we, we talk about streaming shows, some release all the episodes, some do it one at a time. You know, this show did two at a, the first two, the boys did the first three. I think they needed to put the first four out at once so that you could get to so this point, get rid of, yeah, yeah, get to this it. point along with the beginning. It, no, it, I, I think it. it hurt the viewing experience to do it the way they did. And I actually wonder if they knew that because I wanted to discuss this a little bit it felt like the promotion of this show changed a lot this week. Up until now, they were really promoting the sitcom stuff because that's what they were showing and that's what they were excited about. Yeah. This week, if you go back and watch, I deliberately didn't watch these until after I saw the show, but if you go back and watch the promos related to WandaVision around this week's episode and what comes next, mm -hmm. it is all Marvel stuff. It is all the classic Marvel tone. 
yeah. and adventure excite. And so it just makes me wonder, was something going on with the viewership? Was something going on with this show that I wasn't quite catching the way they knew it should? And they just changed the message to be like, don't worry, the payoff is here. I don't know, because this is something that they've been, they have been talking about for quite some time. This is something that they wanted to get out. And obviously if they would have, I mean, I agree with you. If they would have started, started this off with the first four episodes and then we can sort of move on from it and watch the, the, the stuff that we've been waiting for. Um, it was a risk. Do they do? I, I, I doubt that we get something like this ever again. I think from the onset, especially when we get Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it is going to be... That's different. So yeah. they had to deal with this weirdness um, first. They did it. They're getting the feedback. Everybody everybody's saying the same thing, man. This is like, uh, I don't know. What are we watching? But now is is back. Because from the beginning, once I saw or understood what was happening in that first scene, Mm -hmm. I was all in. It's a great scene. Oh, yeah. A great choice. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And when she turned around and saw Vision all, like, dead, she was mm -hmm. like, oh, it brought her back to reality quick. And she said, like, oh, no, I got to change it. Because it was, it, was, it was scary. And it was like, this is what we wanted. This is what we needed. And we got it. And I'm happy that we, we get to move on. Although I think that we'll probably see a few more scenes where things get a little bit more weirder, more quicker in terms of that balance between the show and what's going on outside of it. What did you think of... So I really let, so I, I really love the first scene because I think they hit on something that was a very obvious question following Infinity War and Endgame that they only touched on a little in Spider-Man Far From Home, which was this idea of how did the rest of the world experience the snap and what happened after? What, yeah. what did you think about them, you know, and, and about that as a potential theme that we see maybe in more shows or more films, this idea of the different perspectives of different people who, who saw and lived through that event? I've always wondered about that because the way they did it with Spider-Man is like, oh, it's a blip. They moved on, you know, they didn't care. But this some one, people aged, some people did. Yeah, yeah. So, but there yeah. wasn't that that um, craziness of when that finally happened. There wasn't that um, like in the yeah. They hadn't shown us the in the moment. moment. Yeah, of that. If we get a little bit more of that, it would be very interesting to watch. I'm I'm always going to be interested because it's going to be different scenarios. It's going to be different for everybody that experience and it's going to probably be the beginning of what sets them off in the future um films or tv right so um i i enjoyed that very 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 much um what else oh i like the fact that in the in the show they you know agnes everybody sort of knows that agnes is uh it's not a regular person she's not okay. from sword she 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 may be agatha hardness for uh, what, what people are um speculating that she is and i like the fact that they kept that a mystery uh, because it's gonna be because it may lead to mephisto right and and if that happens how they're gonna make that look if you think he's gonna show up well, I've kind of maintained if he does, it'll only be in the finale as like a hint or sort of a Thanos type cameo, like something pretty small. That's my guess. Something yeah. that could carry into Doc Strange 2. Uh, that would be a, a, maybe a natural connecting point. So we got more, like five more episodes go, to go, right? Yeah. So let me ask you on that point. Mm -hmm. This episode definitely went out of its way to to tell us that Wanda is the mastermind. Oh yeah. The oh yeah. Almost to the point where, you know, like you and I who have always like we're in the rumor mill, which is speculating Mephisto is actually behind. It, it did almost have that feel of, we really want you to look over here because there's something over there. Yeah, so yeah. I, that's what it felt. That's how I sort of internalized that. Oh yeah, the, they, they, the way they did it in the beginning, it was more like, 
Wanda's trap door. Um, Who's doing this to you? Exactly. This episode tried to make it seem like, well, she's doing it to herself. And I'm just like, I'm not buying it. You're still not, totally not buying it. When I saw what I saw in this episode, I, I was like, okay, she is the one building. It seemed to me that she's building this reality. This is what, how far her mind has gone out of whack and not accepting um, the events of what happened prior. And she's creating this world, but not on her own. Yeah, correct. Exactly. Exactly. Agreed. It was like, she is the, she's executing the plan, but I'm not convinced the plan is all hers. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see uh, and the reveal to see what's really going on behind that. I, I, because I the like other thing that we've been shown in the prior trailers, which I think is an interesting setup here, is she says the line, "This is in this episode, this is our home, right? This is this, this alternate is our home. Because there's a line later on in the trailer where Vision's, where she says that line, but they splice it with Vision saying, okay, then let's fight for it which implies that the home they're fighting for is this fake alternate reality. That's what the trailer wants you to believe. And yet, because they're Avengers, I'm kind of being like, well, why would they fight for a fake universe? And you know what I mean? There's something there that's unresolved and feels like a twist. But Vision ain't in it, right? Meaning he's not in on what's going on. No, but it definitely has the feel of he's starting to ask. He's starting to. He's not a dummy either. If this isn't, if this is actually Vision, you know, like from the <laughs> consciousness standpoint, it had the feel in the last episode where he was talking to the neighbors that he was starting to kind of piece together that something was off, and you could kind of feel that in this episode too. I, I get the sense that we're pretty close to him starting to maybe ask some real questions about this and maybe even stumbling onto something that he should not be aware of. Yeah, because it keeps getting closer and closer to him, like getting a little bit more curious as to what's going on. Yes. So that, that I like the way they're building that, that up. Listen, this is what we've been waiting for. This is what we uh, were waiting all these months for. And hopefully it continues. What is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, the one other one I wanted to ask you was what did you think about um, Maria Rambo being seemingly written out of the franchise? Right, so no. Monica Rambo from the comics, we know her arc and she's in this series, but yeah. we wondered what had happened to her mother from Captain Marvel. And in this, we're led to believe she's died, she died of cancer which implies do we is that something we're gonna get in captain marvel 2 i was a little surprised to see that development actually who knows if listen marvel has a good way of going back and telling a story to sort of put some puzzle pieces together if there were if there's anyone um, um, if there's any missing in that thing to figure out so it would be dope if they did something because it said photon Right? Exactly. And, and it said she basically founded Sword. They made her seem like a really central character. That would be a dope movie to see. Talk about representation there. I, well, I it kind of has to happen in Captain Marvel too. Now, that's what it felt like to me. They yeah. don't do it. I'm going to be like, well, where is this? <laughs> is this getting filled in? This is not fair. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I wanted to touch on this. Um, did you hear the rumor that, because speaking of going back, did you hear the rumor that they were originally working on a hawk eye movie and they turned it into a series or that they're still doing that i don't know i heard, i thought it was movie that became a series okay that's what i thought the yeah because remember like because black widow got a movie and i think originally hawkeye was supposed to get a movie and then it became a series that's what okay I, yeah. speaking of black widow so supposedly there is no plans to put black excuse me black widow back on um not back onto but to the to disney plus there's no plans of them releasing it on disney plus and we still have a what day a may day may. whether they stick to it or not 
and we've spoken about it before what we think is going to happen and you know i'm still under the impression based on what's going on it all is all dependent on, on certain factors but you and i can agree that this movie does not get delayed anymore i don't think so but i also don't think may's looking real good for a normalized theater experience that's what i'm saying that's what they can't delay this anymore because if then then you start to wonder or be concerned about their other films because if that gets delayed do other things get shuffled around as well i mean does, if that gets delayed does shang chi get delayed another whatever to the end of the, it just gets a little bit too much i mean i we're gonna get disney content all year and they do have the streaming shows now that they didn't have last year right to back up mandalorian they do have stuff yeah they have stuff to keep us entertained but we still want those movies we still want those movies and hbo is apparently still going on with their plans of releasing these big films to the to the HBO platform. If King Kong versus Godzilla is what we expect it to be and the excitement is there, will Disney cave in to the demand of people wanting to see Black Widow already? I think I think if they release Black Widow the way re- they release Mulan, it's a much safer bet yeah. to do enormous revenue. Yeah. It, it makes all the sense in the world. People are going to pay for Black Widow, man. People are going to pay. I, would you have paid for Wonder Woman? I don't know. I probably would have waited to see what people had to say, you know, but Black Widow, I'm going to give you that $30. No problem. A lot of people are going to give you that $30 and, and you can't delay this anymore. You can't it, delay it, it seems hard to it seems hard to believe they could take their entire calendar and push it another year. That that seems hard to believe, considering we were supposed to have gotten Black Widow and Eternals already, and we were supposed to be getting Shang Chi next month, or actually in a couple weeks. Yeah, to be twelve to eighteen months behind with the way this universe works feels tough to me. Yeah, yeah, I. I, I yeah. I hope that Black Widow is released on Disney Plus because at this point, you know, something that I really personally want to see. I think it's going to be one of those great films, and it's and it's you know it's it's messed up that they won't be able to release it in the theaters the way they would like to, but they have to come to grips with the fact that things aren't the same anymore. You're not going to get. You want the theater release for what? For 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 box office numbers. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what, the, I mean, I would say Black Widow, I would get, I mean, it's not a billion dollar global, well, I shouldn't say that, but I thought it would, I would not have guessed it would be, I would have guessed it'd be more like a 650 to 800 million global, you know, yeah. as a standalone. Yeah. But, um, you know, also the other factor is, you know, the longer, longer sort of the vaccine rollout takes, obviously that impacts park revenue and other sources of revenue for Disney. So that would put more pressure on them to try to put this out. Um, but yeah, it just, it just feels like a safe bet to do it. And, uh, I think the one that is trickier actually to me is Shang-Chi just because what you'd be expecting from the Chinese box office and the Asian box office, with the way that movie is structured and been cast, I think that one's a much tougher decision. Um, why is that? I would be surprised if that ever showed up on Disney plus to be quite honest. Um, oh yeah. I mean, cause if that's really good. You know, if I'm saying Black Widow is like a $750 million movie, if chang is really good, that could be like a billion three oh, to a no billion question. five. No just, question. Just on Asia Box alone. No question. No So question. that's a different calculus. <laughs> I've always said, listen, if, if everything was fine and, and shang chi came out, that would be uh, Black Panther for highest grossing superhero film. I think it could have done that. But because of what's going on in the world... Um, 
in China, they would do great numbers, but here in the U.S., I don't know. People are still, you know, scared. Not right and, now. Yeah, exactly. So, New York and California are shut. No, nope, no way. But, but yeah. still, you can get that. You can get quite a bit of, of, of revenue from the Premier Access. So, I don't know. We'll see, man. I don't know. We'll see. But don't delay anymore, Marvel. It's 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 it's. What are you doing to us? Um, Spider-Man 3. Now, we've spoken about this in the past, but we're not going to get too deep into it. But I just want to sort of, you know, because we have to sort of uh, look at the, the, the playing field and see what has changed. And with Spider-Man 3, you know, we have a, a, an announcement of, of, of a character named Mr. Negative that was just announced. Is well, room. I don't know if it's official, but okay, it's a rumor. Yeah. Um. So you got all these. Listen, you got all these characters being announced, and the expectations have to be lower because I don't believe we're gonna see this Spider Verse that everybody or multiverse that everybody has been sort of uh, expecting. Um. Cause you got to think about he still has to deal with the whole peter parker is spider-man situation and he and that he murdered um mysterio so just so that we you know put a an end to this for now do you think what kind of movie actually do you think we're gonna be getting with spider-man 3 or do you think we're gonna get the multiverse or do you think um, it's just going to be a teaser for a future film. Well, it's definitely going to be a teaser. You, I know what you're asking, which is how big of the parts going to be for all these yeah. people that they've announced. Yeah. My instincts would say it's more of an intro, um, that it's still a very Tom Holland centric movie. And you know, you're going to kind of open up the window to Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and and Jamie Foxx and Alfred yeah. Molina. I, I mean, I think they, if they were only doing a subset of these, they could give them meaty parts in this movie. I mean, there's room enough. Like if you, if you wanted to get to the, okay, movie starts with problem, Spider-Man, wanted fugitive knows the multiverse exists okay does he something know? what does he oh you probably think he does well he does from far from home because it's kind of it's kind of been this because there's the, the fake nick, the fake nick fury kind of tells him about that right like and then mysterio kind of tells him about, so he kind of knows like he doesn't he hasn't really experienced it but i feel like he's aware of it now um so I'm just trying to think of like, okay, just if you structure the movie as starts out as a wanted fugitive, there's some catalyst that brings him into contact with someone from the other universe, be it Jamie Foxx, be it Tobey Maguire, like you pick, pick who you want. Yeah. And then that leads him to, okay, in order to solve whatever problem this is, I need to go into these other universes to recruit other spider-man and that lead you could do that in one movie one like you could but seems a little small for marvel's designs yeah to limit it to that so yeah. definitely feels like this movie has to end with sort of the world has been expanded dramatically and that then sets up some kind of you know, Sinister Six or something that's sort of a bigger scale showdown for the next one. I, I would be disappointed if he gets bailed out by, let's say, either Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield showing up as Spider-Man and he's sort of like, see, I'm not Spider-Man, look at Spider-Man over there. You know, that sort of ordeal. I, I would be disappointed if they get away from that and that and that he doesn't go to court. And... So, well, well, here's, here's a random question. So we're doing multiverse talk. So does that mean that there are two J.K. Simmons, Jonah Jamesons? 
technically, yes, right? Because he was Jonah Jameson in the Maguire verse, and he is in this. So yeah. I, I, don't I don't think he'll show up. Meaning, I don't think he'll be pulled into that whatever uh, storyline that they're gonna do. I think, I think they're gonna take the, their time with this. Because uh, this, even now, talking about it and the possibilities and what ifs is a is a lot to sort of uh, grasp and, and really think about. Because well, I've said this to you, like the, the amount of casting we're getting on this movie, you know, the the, the fans and a lot of the new you, you, they take it as excitement. Oh, look who's oh, coming yeah. back! It raises my concern with this film because it's feeling so crowded, right? So it's like. Typically, movies that have this many characters, don't do unless that. it's done. The, and, and think about how successful Endgame was. Of course. Endgame was successful because the bulk of the movie was just about the original Avengers. Yeah. They didn't pop the whole crowd on you till the last scene, which was great. Typically, movies that are this crowded get a little clunky, and oh, yeah. it makes me a little nervous. That's, that's that, like, what I'm concerned you know, about. Yeah, that's what I'm concerned about. But. Fans shouldn't be bent out of shape if what they're expecting is not what is presented in this movie. I'm fine with them teasing for, uh, you know, a couple of more movies and, and reaching, because I, I think we've already seen the formula of building these big events up, mm -hmm. right? And obviously the storylines will probably be shorter because you have obviously D Disney Plus and Doctor Strange 2 is going to have a lot to do with this multiverse um, aspect so telling what about, story, I'll just I have heard no rumors on this point I'll just throw this out there because I think you and I have wondered when Craven is going to make it actually it's you know Craven's been rumored a lot but it's never actually been cast yeah. or made an appearance yeah. what about Craven as a hunter of all of the Spider-Man would that elevate him as a villain if he takes out one of the older Spider-Men in the next, in like a future film? Like if he actually kills Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield? I mean, Tobey probably be like, yo, kill me. Oh, I'm <laughs> I think they would want it, right? It's oh, kind yeah, of a cool oh, yeah. scene. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. go out oh, yeah. in a battle oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. But I the mean, idea of like, right, because the whole point of Kraven is I'm the big game hunter. And if they tweak the story to say, this guy has been hunting Spider-Man through all of these pieces of the multiverse, maybe that that's would a be cool way to bring him in. That would be interesting, but we'll see. Because with Craven, it seems that there's a lot of people vying for that role or mm -hmm. trying to get that role. So we'll see what they do with that. But Spider-Man Three, I just want people to have their expectations a little bit low. I know these announcements gets people excited. It doesn't get me excited because I worry that we're gonna get too much too soon. You're also going to get a clue, too, because the movie started shooting. So keep an eye out for people the set care. reports when these yeah. people pop up. If they're only on there for a day, it'll probably let you know that the part's not that big. If they're there for two weeks, three weeks, then you'll kind of, you know, so you'll be able to kind of figure out a little something from that, I think. Yeah. Another guy uh, making his return to the MCU, Mr. Sam Neill. Most likely... I'm quite certain of it. That they're gonna do their second, uh, I guess, uh, show of what they play. Do. Yeah, <laughs> the second act of their play. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get that. Uh, do we really want that? <laughs> do we need it? I mean, really. Damon's already Damon's already shooting oh, in, yeah. in Austria. Yeah, so, yeah. listen, those are again. I wasn't a big fan of Thor Ragnarok. This is a like not a big uh, news to me, um, but it's Taika Waititi, and he probably wanted to throw in two minutes of this again, and you know get that 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 humor in that film, which I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a lot of anyway, because how Thor Ragnarok worked the first time, so mm -hmm. they're gonna want to continue on that same. Uh, yeah, we we are not in the majority on on that one. <laughs> critics oh, no, oh, critics no. and box office would be against us. On, oh yeah, on that oh one, yeah. So. That's that's. I mean, I would love to 
have that discussion with anyone who loved Thor Ragnarok. I get it. It was fun. But it wasn't, for me, great because the Hulk was horrendous. And I think it's more, I, I think, I think the planet, the planet Hulk story was, no, you, you, was under you, was thrown yeah. away. Yeah. That's, that's my, and I think you, it, you and I are in agreement on, on Jeff Goldblum. Like we love Jeff Goldblum. I don't know that we wanted Jeff Goldblum in this movie, <laughs> which is what we got. But then to me, it was just Planet Hulk not being used as a true Planet Hulk story felt like a, a waste. That, a that That's probably the biggest disappointment I have with Thor Ragnarok is that you, you threw away uh, one of the, you threw away Planet Hulk and then what came after that? Right, yes, because it set the Hulk down that path of what you got. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the Hulk is a limbo. Mark Ruffalo is worried he's gonna get fired. I hope they get rid of him. I mean, I like Mark Ruffalo, but for the Hulk, he's not, he just wasn't the right choice. He did a fantastic job. Again, we're probably reiter reiterating what we've said in the past, but not not many people were watching the show back then. But now, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, he did fantastic in the first couple of films, but then they, they I think they destroyed his character and Thor Ragnarok and they kept that same tone for him. And uh, it, it, Hulk for me hasn't been the same since. Yeah, it's interesting because I think Professor Hulk really resonated with critics. If you read the reviews of like Endgame, most people seem to like that hybrid of, of the the Hulk personality and the Bruce. I think for you, for us, and I think for a lot of kind of hardcore fans of the Hulk, it was, we don't think of him as, as a comic relief teddy bear, which is kind of what he became. He's a monster. And like part of what makes the con the character interesting is brilliant scientist, unstoppable monster in the same person, right? And, we, and losing that was kind of tough at the biggest moment in the whole sequence of movies. Do you think it'll hurt the things they view in terms of the kind of guy he is. If you compare him to Professor Hulk, big, strong guy, smart, but, but kind of goofy. Uh, no, I mean, I think it goes to a, a, one of the ongoing themes of, uh, that I find fascinating about this. There's something about this character they just haven't cracked in TV or movie form. And it, it's interesting to see that, like the the ang like the angry version, too serious, too dark, too sad. Um, Ed Norton's version probably got the closest, but then that movie didn't. You know, that movie did the same box as, that box office as Angley's Hulk, so it clearly didn't connect in the right spots with the fan base either. And then we got Ruffalo, who probably was the, I don't know, he there were definitely moments where I felt like he was the best Bruce Banner part of the persona over the number of movies he did but it's almost like he almost peaked with like the hulkbuster fight that almost felt like or maybe not i don't know maybe it was like maybe his peak was actually that or, or getting his butt kicked by thanos at the start of infinity war but it wasn't because of him it's because it made thanos look really terrifying but yeah. i don't know it just it just felt like he kind of petered out as the as the arc went on like it's like they, they yeah. struggled to figure out where he should go yeah. in this in this universe and and that seems to be the theme with this character it's like it doesn't quite have a home and that's yeah. that's a little weird to me yeah yeah well i hope we they, they figure that out i hope they've had enough time to really think this through with that character because this character could be your favorite character it's no longer my favorite character nor do i look forward to seeing the hulk unless we hear something about him being the hulk that we've never seen before you start talking that sort of language when when talking about the Hulk, then I'm interested. But if we're gonna get Mark Ruffalo and Taika Waititi is directing it, then I'm out. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe the maybe the reaction function is that maybe the Hulk should be in an R-rated universe. I don't know, like where it can be more violent and more fearsome and more monster oriented. I don't know. I'm just I'm spitballing because if you had told me at the start of this Avengers exercise what would have been the hardest character to make work? I would have actually said Captain America. I would say that guy is too straight, too simple, too much of a throwback to really be all that interesting. And that turned out to be incredibly That's rewarding. One of the best arcs we had. Yeah. So I'm just sort of scratching my head why they haven't been able to sort of 
strike that balance with this character, which is more complex and has more seemingly fun elements to it. But. I think in order for the work, the Hulk to work, would he would have to have a great supporting cast of other heroes. Um, and he has to, and he has to be the Hulk that everyone's afraid of. He has to be the Hulk that Bruce Banner's afraid of. Right. You know, it has to. Ed Norton is even Mark Ruffalo when he first started out. They were both terrified of becoming that that monster. And even though in the first uh, Hulk that we saw, Incredible Hulk, um, tw at the end, you get that sense that everyone has a has the, the control aspect of the Hulk and can turn whatever whenever he wants. I don't know if they use that as um, for that scene when um, what's his name Ruffalo said, you know, I'm always angry, and he turned into the Hulk at will. Mm -hmm. But. He has to be that 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 dude that nobody wants to mess with, and, and it's hard to do a solo Hulk film. It's hard to do that because you can't get, and I, we've said this before, you can't get two hours of Hulk smash. No, right. So a good supporting cast, you get Doc Samson, the real Doc Samson. You get someone like the leader who's supposedly rumored to take over the Hydra sort of um, space that they left. Uh, and you can't, but you can't make it hokey. You can't make it goofy. You know that you have to have some seriousness to the Hulk because what he does is destroys anything in his path, and people are afraid of him. Right? He's you know the classic Frankenstein story. You know, um, I think that's the route that they have to go, and they have to create that separation. I mean, I think that that acceptance of the Hulk from Bruce Banner was was given to us too soon. It should have been. He's trying to find a cure. He's trying to avoid changing into the Hulk. I don't know if you've ever seen the Hulk versus cartoon with Wolverine. I have not. Oh, what? No, I haven't. Sorry. Oh, my God. You got All me. right. So that's on my that's on my homework list then. You got to raise that to the top of your list. Whatever is on number one, that got to be erased. You got to put this. Hulk versus the animated movie, because there was two of them. There was Hulk versus um, Wolverine and Hulk versus Thor. Okay. So it, it was like two one-hour uh, flicks put together. It was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. Moving on. Godzilla versus Kong. The trailer. Is it come shame. a long? We come a long <laughs> way from dudes in rubber suits. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it is a shame. It is a shame that we can't see it in the theater. In some places you may be able to see it, but is it? I'm not gonna go see it in theaters. But this would have been wonderful to see in the theaters. But nonetheless, I don't want no more delays. Or none of that, because you know, this is a film. Are you? I mean, this is not a film that you watch with a pen and pad and try to give it. You know, it's not a movie that you review. <laughs> you just tell, you just talk about how what the 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 destruction. This is going to be total destruction, you know, total destruction. I can't wait for this film. What did you think about that trailer, man? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts. Okay. So first off, I gotta <laughs> Do you ever did you see the Tarzan movie from like four or five years ago? I with Alex saw it. It it's it's not it's not great. But so Alexander Skarsgard was Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. What is he doing in this trailer? <laughs> I didn't even notice him. He's the, he's the scientist at the beginning. 
who is effectively calling Kong back to battle Godzilla. And I'm like, okay, so he would he he just can't get enough of being Lord of the Apes. Like what he's like, I gotta get the biggest ape. Like what? <laughs> so I couldn't stop laughing when I saw him. Anyway. Uh, the trailer was great because you have like quality actors who are trying to deliver these lines with a straight face and i'm like i don't care about any of you <laughs> i do not care about any of you yeah. just show me the show two me of them thing. going at it which is exactly what we got and it looks amazing now i do have a question for you so what happened here with the size is kong they're the same size somehow it looked like unless i'm imagining like they're so pretty did much they shrink size. Godzilla, or did they just make Kong? I think they probably made Kong bigger. Okay. Uh, I, there were some people like posting stuff about that actually on Instagram, showing his evolution of how big he is. Okay. This one he's going to be obviously tremendous. I heard that he doesn't get. I don't know if I'm spoiling it, but there's speculation, and I think it it, it could be dope if they did it that way. Is that he gets the title of King Kong after this film? It, does that? Before I get into that, did you did you read into or see any indication or read anything about people saying that Mecha Godzilla? Yes, I was going to ask you about this, which is, do you think Godzilla was actually Godzilla in this trailer or not? Because one, he's getting his butt kicked, which seems highly unlikely. In a fight with wow. Kong to me. But two is you have that quote from Millie Bobby Brown where she's like, there's something making him do this that we don't understand. Oh. And I think people, you know, when they see a, a versus movie with two characters who have been portrayed as heroes in all their prior films, the expectation is they team up at some point in this movie, which would indicate it would make a lot of sense if Mecha Godzilla is the villain. <laughs> That you're being shown in the trailer somehow and then real godzilla is actually out there somewhere and hasn't shown up yet you know what i'm in if they do it so that's that, fine remember the, the the end credit scene of the king of the monsters when he goes and um i forget his character brother noomsi from the golden child yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to retrieve the head of Ghidorah. Yeah. Do you think that only makes sense to me that he builds or somehow finds the means and the resources to build a Mecha Godzilla? A Mecha Godzilla, yeah. Yeah. That and that would sense. make sense. There's also that shot of that sort of sinister looking scientist who I believe is either named or tied to the Sarazawa name from the original Godzilla. So that that guy is shown in the trailer briefly. He doesn't say anything. But there's definitely it definitely has the feel of like there's an element of this we're not getting in the trailer, which is being hinted at in the dialogue. And then it sort of lines up with what you're seeing in the fight scenes. Yeah. Um, although I will say, I mean, like as silly as it is, the idea of Kong having this Kong-sized weapon, almost like Voltron's sword, and being able to block the fire. I was like, I mean, this is great. Like, who cares? This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, again, if this this is supposed to be the last, yes, um, of these films. So, I'm just gonna put it out there. So, who's gonna fill that void when these monster films aren't being made? I'm telling you, this is the opening for Voltron. Uh, you don't have to twist my arm. This <laughs> I know, is one I of know, my favorite all-time toys and shows. And, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a simple enough concept that you can do it very well. Although, as we talked about, our only criteria, do not come to Earth. Do not put oh, yeah. Earth in this series. You cannot. You have to go to Eris. You have to go to space. Do not bring this show anywhere near Earth. You oh, do, man. it becomes Power Rangers, and I'm out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if there's any indication that they're on Earth, if I see a street sign that I recognize in the trailer, I'm done. I'm done. DC. I only have two words that are appropriate for March 18th. Judgment Day. I thought you were going to say bathroom break. <laughs> no. 
Yeah, because it's four hours. <laughs> so I'm gonna sit there. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit there, and I, I'm gonna watch it. But that's gonna be Judgment Day. Judgment Day is upon us on March 18th. That I have nothing more to say about that. So you tell me, is it not Judgment Day for uh, Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League? Yeah, no doubt. Actually, you know, I think I think one thing that's nice from our perspective is we we did get a sense of the impact Wonder Woman eighty four had for HBO Max as a service, and and by having this be March eighteenth, it is in the next quarter, the next fiscal quarter. So that will mean that with, when AT and T kind of gives us their results for the first quarter, I think we'll get a very good sense of between you know you'll basically have Godzilla versus Kong and this basically in the last couple weeks of the first quarter you get a good sense of like the impact that this has had on the service and that's really what I'm interested to see because I think you know as you, you and I have said like at this point we've discussed the movie ad nauseum and we're just waiting to finally see it yeah. uh, and discuss it but um, I'm with you I mean it's like at least we don't have to we don't have to wonder anymore about the differences between the theater version and his version. We just get to see it. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly, exactly. We get to see it and listen, if it is what I think it'll be, we are dedicating a full show. There's, there is no news. The report will be about Zack Snyder's Justice League. That's, what be the, that's gonna be the show. I don't care what happens after that or be before that that's all we're discussing on that day because this is what we've been waiting for this is the the, the years of release of Snyder Cut. it is here it is upon us now let's see what you intended to show my in my opinion nothing different from what uh we came out of watching that film which was total disgust for, and from my perspective my point of view, I was I, I was not pleased. Every time I see it on, on on when I'm flipping through channels and I see the name, I skip as fast as I can. I skip it. I don't want nothing to do with um, Justice League because it was to me it was horrendous. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not concerned. You know, we we talked about this at length. It it is going to be better than the theatrical version. I'm actually not concerned about that as much given everything we know that went into that troubled production or a piece of it but for me it's can this movie redeem batman versus superman because to no. me that's the movie that really let me down yeah right? true that i liked man of steel more than you did yeah and i was skeptical I but willing to see yeah but i was skeptical when they had introduced batman into kind of the man of steel storyline I was a little skeptical, especially when it seemed like they weren't doing World's Finest. But I remember being really disappointed with the choices and the direction that BBS yeah, went in. And so for me, it's like Justice League has to bring that movie full circle and make it feel like that was worth it. And I'm skeptical, but that's kind of how I'm kind of going into this. It's like, can he can he change my mind about the whole arc yeah. post Man of Steel? We'll see, man. We'll see where this takes us going forward with these characters or in that or, or that world, DCEU. I hope it, it, it ends with that. From what it seems like, I feel it will. The talk of the talk that Zack Snyder had prior to, um, not prior to, but in the past, he was talking about doing other stuff after this that talk has died down even and i even heard some statement from him that he doesn't believe that there's going to be a future after this we'll see um you still probably think because of the because obviously yeah numbers numbers are numbers and subscribers are subscribers if that brings in listen if 17 million which is where i believe they are now in terms of subscribers um, they can thank Wonder Woman for that. Um, I don't think that they will not or not think about trying to do something more with it because of the subscribers. 
Yeah, I mean, my whole thesis has been the way this movie was structured. It was always meant to have a second part. And so I'm expecting there will be a lot of elements and threads in this movie that could lead you down other paths. And so my thought has been, if this does enough from a subscriber perspective, and if this release the Snyder Cut movement sees this and sees that it is in, it's a finished version of this movie, but an unfinished vision overall, that they will continue yeah. their push. And all of that will then add up to, at some point, there being another part to this. And I just, until that doesn't happen, I'm still in the camp that it will happen somehow some way yeah i know i've said a lot more than i thought i would say because i said in the previous show i was not going to say a lot but it's like it's hard not to because i want to cover all the bases of what could be happening and what i think won't happen but again i ended off with this march 18th is judgment day for zack snyder's justice League. so prepare yourselves for that show um, James Gunn Suicide Squad. Uh, James Gunn in a tweet, he was responding to someone's question about um, whether this Suicide Squad is going to, or do, the question was, do I need to watch the prior Suicide Squad in order to get what's going on in this film? He, and he tweeted, he said, you'll be fine if you don't, if you don't watch it, the first one. So that leads us to believe that there is not going to be much connection to the prior film because most people would agree that the prior film wasn't that great i didn't necessarily I, I think it was horrible i wouldn't say it's not going to be hard it wasn't horrible it was bad i don't see where they go from there but with james gunn doing what he's doing with this version who obviously there is a hope for more because of the peacemaker show that he's doing um what do you think about uh that you don't have to watch the first film in order to get this film is this a reboot or they're just totally like not really thinking about the first one this is not necessarily a reboot but there's no connection to the first one I think it's the latter. I think it's basically like, and you, I think DC's mantra has just been, you know, we can have, it's not a true, it's not a true multiverse. It's just, we can have multiple versions out at the same time and they don't have to connect. Yeah. And so I think it's a logical question by whichever fan asked that, given the number of cast members who are back from the first one, true. you would kind of logically think like, wait, are you the same Captain Boomerang or the same Amanda Waller that you were in that film? I think that's just a case of James Gunn probably watching the first film and being like, I'm not going to be able to cast better than Viola Davis or, you know, Joel Kinnaman or, or you know, they, or Margot Robbie and just saying like, great, let's roll with this, but let's roll with it with a different motif, a different story. And if I want to write your character differently, then I'm, you're going to perform it differently. So I think that's all it is. And I, I think I'm, I'm glad if it's a standalone, great. Like that's, that's makes all the sense in the world as to why James Gunn would do it in the first place. So. Wonder Woman did what it was supposed to do, which was bringing subscribers. They, um, Warner Brothers had their or well, AT&T had their investors day or whatever, or they earnings, had, that was basically their earnings call. Their, think, their yeah. earnings call. Yeah. And Wonder Woman did what they expected it to do was to bring in more subscribers. But as you and I know, the backlash that it got of it not being a, a great film, you certainly can continue doing films like that, releasing it on HBO Max and expect that you're going to get subscribers just because, oh, it's Wonder Woman, or is this, or is Batman, Dep you know, it all depends on stuff. Again, the way I see it is companies are banking on releasing content, whatever it may be, so 
so that they can get those subscribers number because HBO Max, obviously, I mean, yeah, HBO Max, their subscribers is, is, is pales in comparison to Netflix and Disney Plus. It's even smaller than Peacock. I think Peacock's at 33 million is what I read the other day. And that's crazy. And I don't even, I, I, I don't subscribe to Peacock. I don't watch any of the shows. I haven't heard anything. I don't know if you got it. Do you got Peacock? I don't have it. No. And you, you haven't heard, have you heard any like, oh, watch this show? Oh, it's on Peacock. Like stuff that, there's not a lot of, yeah, no, like there's not a lot of buzz around original programming. Obviously this combines the NBC library with the Universal library. Yeah. But no, I haven't really felt compelled to get it. I trialed, I demoed CBS All Access, which is being rebranded as Paramount yeah. Plus. But I really only did that to watch Picard. <laughs> I did, and then I, I let the free subscription laps i didn't maintain it so yeah. um hbo max i added because of their choice and because once like when they moved wonder woman onto the service i subscribed yeah. initially i wasn't going to because it was yeah. too expensive but once they said the whole slate's coming i get to see that i said yes. okay add that to your existing library and i'll do it yeah so it's going to be interesting next year or so how the movie business um evolves um where do you see uh, i mean because we've talked about it before you know we think people movies are going to come back um but this subscription thing is is being is, is is the bigger narrative for a lot of these companies right now regardless let's say if they have movie theaters i think subscription numbers and the revenue that they can get from subscriptions is huge and I think the only people that really, I, in my opinion, the people that really want movies to be in movie theaters is the talent, obviously, because that's what they, you know, they make movies for, to be up on the big screen, to have a crowd watching your movie and, and cheering or whatever the case may be. They, you know, it's interesting. So they need, they need a mega hit from one of these films. I, yeah. I happen to think the Snyder Cut is going to be that, even though it's not necessarily for the traditional reasons. I just think the, I don't know, the the mystique around this idea is going to make it a mega hit for them. But, yeah. you know, I had referenced the little things which I was excited about with Denzel Washington, Rami Malek, and Jared Leto. I have read that that's not very good. Wow. Which would, and I'm like, how do you screw up a movie with those three <laughs> leads? But it's sort of what looks like a crime serial killer movie. I'm like, this can't be bad, but I've read that it actually is not that good. And so it leads me to your first two movies out of the gate were like Wonder Woman 84, which was polarizing. And then this, which seems like it may be a disappointment. Like you need some, you need some real buzz winners in here Thanks. too. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, how often are you going to go with you know big names for your platform and the content isn't good is i'm listen denzel washington isn't doing dope movies anymore no nah, he yeah well but he's never bad i mean i, I just he's never bad but it's like after a while it's like i'm not going to continue paying for this you know it just be oh i'm not i'm going to see i'm not I, i'm not going to go see a movie with denzel washington starring denzel washington in the movie theaters ever but it, but i even throw in like <laughs> You know, Tenet, which I said last week, like I like it better yeah. than I think the bus. But Tenet did not have the reviews and the positive kind of halo that Dunkirk had, which was Chris Nolan's last movie. And that's mm -hmm. what I mean. Like these movies they're bringing out, whether it's theater or service, they're they're like okay to disappointing. Like that's you want to. I think you want to lead stronger than that. So that's why. And you know, like Kong versus Godzilla, it's interesting. You and I are probably going to love this no matter what. It is not going to be critically acclaimed. Let's be honest, right? So that's so your March film is already not like a. It's more of a niche hit for people yeah. who like that kind of film. Yeah. You know, and so then that's why I just I kind of default to the Snyder cut is like it's like review proof. It's like review proof. <laughs> no matter what it is, it, it, there's so many people going to see it. That's the mega hit. But they at some point one of these films, hopefully it's actually Suicide Squad. Yeah. One of these films has to be like ninety percent fresh. You know, Metacritic scores like I eight mean, and a half, and like, and the and the equivalent of the cinema scores like an A plus. Like everyone who sees it's like you got to see it. Like they they need one of those in this year's slate. 
Yeah, and, and like Disney Plus and Netflix, they've had those Quiet Place, um, The Irishman, Soul. You and you know Mulan had more buzz um, than in terms of it being a better film than Wonder Woman. And now I'm surprised that the little things is being, um, you know, described as not a good film. So yeah, uh, HBO Max needs to. I don't know what. It's crazy to me. It's like we watch films, we watch, and we sort of decide. Well, we agree, like, oh, this movie was good. This movie was dope. You know what I'm saying? How are these guys going into these films, watching these films, and putting it out, thinking that this movie is dope or that is good? What are they looking at? Are they just looking at star power, and 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 they feel that that will drive them home? Yeah, no, it's a it's a good question, and I also don't know, like, with these movies, if they've all been finished, then the, then the service controls the order in which they're released. You know, like Wonder Woman eighty four was done for like over a year. Now, I, I they, they didn't make the they made the right decision to put that on Christmas. Yeah. The timing was right. Okay, so even if it wasn't a great film, like the timing is right. But in general, if they're looking at these twelve films or seventeen films, I guess it is for the next year the order they put them out in does matter to the service. Like mm -hmm. if you lead with five disappointing films or five duds, you get, you're going to hurt the trajectory of the subscriber base. Like if, yeah. if you can sprinkle in, you know, something where you're like, I, we've got gold here. We know it. Like that's going to make a difference. Yeah. So I'd be interested to see if the order changes at all as we move along through the year based upon how this does. But yeah, yeah I was, I was, yeah. So far I would say like, yeah, they're, they're, they're still lacking the, the really mega buzz hit and they could use it of course they, they they need that they need that because if these things are being hyped up right these 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 movies are being hyped up to be dope movies or whatever because there's, well, there's a lot of, of let me flip it on you let's say yeah. like let's say let's say they had the not matrix four let's say they had the original matrix in the vault right now and they put that on the service you tell me people wouldn't sign up and the buzz wouldn't be like, dude, you got to see this movie. Like, oh, like okay. if that came out, like people, people be signing <laughs> up right and left because you have to see this movie. And that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. They need something. They need stuff like that. They need stuff like that. Yeah. I agree. Um, our last topic. Uh, we've mentioned it in the past before. Um, and that's invincible. Um, that's coming out when again? March 26th. We got a busy end of March. Yeah, so March 26th, we got the the animated series coming to Amazon, correct? Yeah, with an absolute... I mean, it's got a better voice cast than any, oh, any, yeah. any show I've ever oh, seen in my yeah. life. It's the, unbelievable. The voice cast is, is amazing. And there, there's also talk of them doing a live action mm -hmm. version of this, which... I'll, you, you can do something as compelling as the boys because the Inv invincible is not a kid friendly no animated show there's going to be blood there's going to be this this there's going to be uh some some stuff in there that you know you wouldn't want your kids to to watch but as an adult you, you're all for it um if at the animated series does well we're certainly getting a live action film i agree and i think this this is an avenue where the superhero genre can continue to reinvent itself and work it's this idea as you said of there are superheroes in it but the the thrust and the central messages or the genre of the movie are not really like traditional comic book and that's kind of how i see this right like the way it's been portrayed in the in the trailers like a lot of this is like a father son show but it just happens to be in the context of the dad is this superman like figure who actually isn't that virtuous necessarily he's got his flaws and his problems and he's trying to raise a son who also has these gifts and i'm like so that's a really interesting 
yes. time honored movie idea. It's just being done in the superhero verse. And that's, yeah. that's cool. So I, I, if this show is as good as the trailer looks, bring on the live action. Oh yeah. Um, um, oh yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that show. I've been looking forward to it since last year when it was announced since it was uh since they showed the first trailer for it and and now you know march we're, i'm looking forward to that more than i am um snyderverse i'm not snyderverse um the Zack snyder justice league film but uh it, it, march is gonna be a very very jam-packed uh month for the, well, we got falcon and winter soldier <laughs> snyder cut godzilla versus kong and invincible in a two-week time period <laughs> wow <laughs> wow there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot um once again thank you for uh for those individuals who have subscribed to the channel um we reached 100 i was gonna when i saw 98 i was gonna do a special show for 100 do probably do a live show but i'm gonna wait for till we get to a thousand before i do a live show i'm not ready for a live show just yet um but i want to thank everyone who has been watching who has been um sharing it with um other enthusiasts of the genre um and have liked the show and have shared it shared it with their friends and families and uh we really do appreciate it but you know whether we get the likes or subscriptions or not we're still going to be doing this show because we love talking about this genre we like talking about uh what's going to be happening in the future most of the time we're right or and if we're not right we're certainly like around the target not necessarily the red we're like the white part the black we're right there we're right there we, we we're on we're on point with ours um but yeah man thank you for everyone who who has been supporting us uh brian any last words my last words would just be to people who have not started one division yet now is a good time that's what i would tell you with with episode one through four yeah it's a good time to get caught up and you'll feel situated as we're, it seems like we're heading into the, the really fun meaty yes. part of the show. Yes, definitely. Now you, you're right. If I would have waited, I would have been okay. I probably wouldn't have the same complaints, but having to wait week to week for what has developed into what we've been waiting for has been tough, but now we're, 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 we're at where we're supposed to be. Um, thank you once again for joining us and we'll see you next week on the Nerd Gen Report. Have a good night. Have a good morning and have a good afternoon. Later, Brian. That's it. <laughs>